crafty friends happy friday welcome to floss tube my name is jesse and this is Miss Lee pages my pronouns are she and they welcome welcome uh today's friday october 15th and uh if you're new here welcome if you are returning welcome back happy to have you uh, i hope you've all had the best week that's been available to you um it's been I was going to say it's been a busy week, but honestly, it's been what has become a normal week uh, for me. <laughs> so we're going to talk about some cross-stitching today. Um, I'm also going to change it up a little bit because I don't have a ton of cross-stitching to talk to you about. So we're also going to talk about knitting today. Um, and that's uh, largely because I haven't had a chance to make a knit cast. So I thought since I don't have as much cross stitching as usual, uh, I would fill out the video with some knitting. So hopefully that'll be good for everybody. Um, I know some of you do enjoy the knitting stuff and if you don't enjoy the knitting stuff, that's fine too. You can, uh, you can check out once the cross stitching stuff is over, no harm, no foul. It doesn't bother me at all. Watch what you want to watch and then, you know, go live your life. It's all good. So, <laughs> um, so this week, shall we do some updatey goodness? Um, I try to get the updates in the front just because I have trouble remembering later. Um, <clears throat> so I can tell you about my happy work news now because it's official. Um, I actually got a promotion at work. So um, things are probably going to get even busier. I was hoping things would slow down for the holidays, but things may be getting much, much busier going forward. So um, I'm going from being a general support person to the uh, the folks in my uh, my current division, and I'll be more of a, a an overall support person for data for the entire organization. So it's a brand new position, um, and it's interesting because this tends to be the way that I move up in in um, in organizations in general. I seem to somehow always end up in a position that was newly created, and I guess that's because I have a different way of looking at things and different abilities than some other folks and so they in, instead of fitting into already existing positions positions end up being created for me i don't know how that happens um the good part of that is that obviously people recognize my skills and i you know i get to move up and do different things and that's really cool um the some the slightly downside of that is that i'm constantly put in a position where there's no uh there aren't any like established guidelines. Nobody has done this before, so I'm having to create it myself, which is exciting, but also daunting. Um, so yeah, so this is a brand new position for our agency. We have not had a, a dedicated data person up until this point. Um, but I have a lot of new responsibilities. Some some of my responsibilities will be carried over. Some of my responsibilities are going to be uh, given to somebody who should be taking my previous position and that kind of stuff. But uh, but yeah, so I got a promotion. It works. So that was the happy news that I couldn't talk about last week. Um, but it's official now. The entire agency has been notified. Um, I made it Facebook official yesterday. So <laughs> so yeah, um, so yeah, it's um, and I have to say this is this is a little bit of me. Um, tooting my own horn, but this is the third promotion I've gotten in four years, so must be doing something right. I have to say things like that because I forget that I, I'm good at things. <laughs> I do. So, um, so yeah, so that's the work news. Um, the new position is effective immediately, but I'm still doing the old position too. So things feel pretty much exactly the same as they did before. <laughs> at some point I'll have to train a new person. That will be its own fun, but, um, but yeah. Um, personal life wise, as far as like meds and things like that, uh, things seem to be on a relatively even keel. Um, it turns out that I had misunderstood what the doctor talked about, about, um, going up on my medication dosage. Um, so somehow, I don't know, it was just weird. I was taking a lower dosage, but I was taking it twice a day. And what she wanted me to do was go from a lower dosage twice a day to a higher dosage once a day, which to me doesn't that's not different. It's the same daily dosage. It's just I'm taking it at one time instead of half of it twice. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> so there was a little bit of a hiccup. Um, but I think things are evening out. I haven't had the side effects that I did when I first started the medication, but I did get like extra tired this week. But I may also be dealing with some dental stuff that I am currently taking care of. Um, I, I got an antibiotic because I think I had um, a tooth infection starting and uh, since next week is vacation and a couple of weeks after that I have um, another dental appointment. I wanted to just deal with that so we can move on and not have to push things back or deal with things. So yeah, so so that's where I am like physically, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what kind of update that is. Personal update, life update. 
Um, but yeah, so feeling pretty good mentally, physically very, very tired. Um, and I don't know if that's the meds or if that's just me. I'm tired all the time anyway. I have a really hard time getting up in the morning. And that has been for my entire life. Like I was one of those kids where my mom had to wake me up 72 times because I just couldn't get up in the morning. And everybody kept saying, well, if you get up at the same time every day, your body will get used to it. No. No, my body does not like getting up at the time that you have to get up in order to have a day job. <laughs> it just doesn't, it just doesn't. Now, generally once I'm up, I'm okay around nine o'clock or so, but, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So, okay, so that's where we are. That's where we are this week. Um, so we're gonna do, we're gonna do some cross stitchy stuff. I don't have any happy mail, so we're gonna dive into the cross stitchy stuff here in a second. Um, I'll give you some updates on progress and talk about some intentions over the next week or so. Oh, one last update before I move on to that. Um, there will almost definitely not be a video next week. Um, I will be on vacation um, and I don't think that I'm going to be in a position to make a video. Um, but if I can, I will. Uh, but I'm not going to put any pressure on myself. So just FYI, probably not a video next week. Um, <clears throat> but then we'll be back to regular, whatever the regular schedule is after that, whether that's one video or multiple videos. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so we still have it's only, today is the 15th, so we still have two weeks left in, in October. Um, my ADHD brain, like, because it's the 15th of October, basically October is over and my brain wants to move on to November. That's, that's how my brain works. There's none of this, we're halfway through the month, we still have two weeks. It's like, nope, halfway through the month, it's over. Month is over. We're done. <laughs> we're not done. <laughs> we still have a lot of October to go, which is good because I have, I have smalls that I need to work on. So, uh, so let's get into it, right? Okay. sip of coffee. <clears throat> coffee is life, y'all. Okay, so I have a finish and a new start for you this week. Um, you're probably already aware of what the finish is because <laughs> it was really close last week. So um, I have finished completely. Uh, Fatima is finished. I decided not to stitch Trick or Treat on the bottom. Um, and that's largely because I do want them to fit in with the other animals and dresses that I'm going to stitch from Barbara Anna. And there's so many. Um, there's a bird. Um, I think it's called Berry Bird or something. Strawberry Bird something. Um, that I had actually set aside for um, February aviary. So there's that one. There's a new uh, chicken or a hen that is out, a hen in a dress. There's the fox in a dress, which is all kitted up and ready to go. And I keep meaning to start it and I keep forgetting about it. Um, and that one is actually called The Light. And there's... Um, Oh, the squirrel in the dress is the new one, but there's a chicken in a dress, there's a squirrel in a dress, there's a fox in a dress, I've already done the goose in the dress, um, and then there's like a blackbird, a strawberry blackbird, or a blackbird with strawberries uh, in a dress. There's at least that many, and I'm probably going to stitch them all at some point. So instead of putting text here um, so that this one would be different than the others, um, I decided to leave the trick or treat off, and so Fatima is, is finished. And um, I think I had mentioned, there we go. I think I had mentioned last week that I was gonna try something different for some accents. And I don't know how well you can tell, it's a little bit shiny on camera, but I have used a satin DMC floss. So for the, for the soles of their boots there, for the accents in the bow tie, and for this ribbon on the hat, that's all a, 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 a sort of electric blue DMC satin which I think really pops. I love it. I love the way that looks. So I was concerned because it is a different, um, it's certainly not a teal <clears throat> like I have used in, uh, you know, the turquoise kind of colors over here. Uh, directionality. Okay, I can't get my finger to do what I want it to do. <laughs> so it's certainly not the same kind of um, um, teal turquoise that I have used here or in the skirt. So I wasn't sure that it was really going to mesh very well, but I actually really kind of like the way it pops. Um, and then we, of course, have the pumpkins and the stars and everything. So um, so they are finished. Fatima's finished. Love it. Love, love, love. Um, so at some point I'll have to decide how I'm going to fully finish these um, because I do have the goose in the dress. And now I have um, a Halloween cat in a dress. So we're going to have to have to figure out how to finish these. And uh, Loki wants attention. May I help you, sir? What would you like? 
What would you like? I don't think he's going to jump up on the table like Momo did last week. <clears throat> but yeah, so we have a finish. So this is Season of Smalls finish number five. Um, so we're officially halfway through Season of Smalls, um, or we're halfway through my goals for Season of Smalls. Uh, we're a little bit more than, we're about three quarters of the way through Season of Smalls um, as far as the deadline goes. So we have two weeks left. Um, I need to do five more Smalls in two weeks. Um, it's gonna be busy. It's gonna be busy. Um, but I just haven't, I haven't had the stitchy bug this week. <clears throat> but on Sunday during the Zoom, I did start number six. So here is number six. And if all I were planning on doing um, were the one side of the, because this is meant to be a needle book. So if all I were planning on doing is the front side of the needle book, I'd actually be very nearly finished. Oops. Let me get this thread out of the way. So, um, <clears throat> because all that's really left is um, there's another piece of petal here and then there's the, the mirror image of it on the other side. I think there's something like 100 stitches or something left. So this is what it's going to look like. If I can get the camera to focus. So that's where I am. Focus, please. Why are we not focusing? Okay, there we go. So that's where I am. And that's where I need to be. <laughs> now, depending on how much longer it takes me, I may just do this half of it and call that the finish for the small. Um, but my original intention was to go ahead and stitch um, a second one over here. And I may actually, um, I was thinking about um, changing up the colors on the second one. So um, there's there's three colors here. It's three colors of color and cotton from my primitive uh, subscription that I got last month, I think. Um, so what I might do is actually like swap the green out for this dark red and put the orange where the green was and so on and so forth um, so that this one will look a little bit different and then ultimately finish that into a needle book. We'll see. I haven't decided whether I'm going to call it finished once I get that first motif done. Uh, what I will do, <clears throat> for the sake of not being a cheaty McCheater face, um, if I call it finished here with just that motif, I will not do this one and then call that a second finish. I won't do that. Um, so either this will be the finish or I'll do the whole thing as the finish. It's something like 400 stitches or 300 stitches for the entire motif. So it's really... Um, if I do both of them, that's about the same number of stitches as we're in the um, Crystal Gazing Mandala from Biao, uh, from Ba Miao. Um, so really, it's still in the small range, um, but we'll see. A lot depends on time. So I'm, I'm planning on uh, finishing that, or I'm, I, have, I have intentions to finish that this weekend um, and get something else started. I haven't decided what the next thing is going to be, um, <clears throat> but... Uh, that's number six. So once this is finished, I still need four more. Um, excuse me. And uh, I am planning on taking multiple small options for, excuse me, I'm trying to get hiccups. Um, I am planning on taking multiple small options for vacation. So, um, because that's the nice thing about stitching smalls is that I can put a bunch of different projects in a very, very small spot um, and have plenty of space for them. Now, if I, if I ever took my pieces off of their frames, I could pack them however I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> but I do still need the frames to stitch with, so the frames would have to carry. Um, but these, um, most of my smalls, are fitting into these like five and six inch um, round hoops. Um, so these are super easy to pack and carry. And most of my stitchy supplies will be in my little zip it pouch here. So between this and a couple of hoops, I should have everything I need to do some smalls while I'm on vacation. So that'll be good. Um, so hopefully I'll catch up a little bit on vacation. We'll see, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> I may be too enamored of Katiosaurus to be <laughs> worried about stitching. We'll have to see. <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, so that's the stitching. Um, uh, I had meant to look up 
the totals for the um, marathon for MMIW G2S to see where we are with donations. Um, I know that I personally am very, very close to my thousand dollar goal because I've had um, one especially generous donation this uh, this week. Um, and uh, her company is actually going to match her donation as well. So that's going to be super, super awesome. Um, so that along with the other donations that have come in this week, and there's been three or four of them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> that along with the other donations that have come in this week have put me pretty close to, if not over $800. Um, so my goal is $1,000. So we're getting really, 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 really close. Um, and we ha still have two weeks, still two weeks for donations. And I know for a fact that the overall project, the everybody working for the hashtag, um, we have raised over $10,000 for the Coalition to Stop Violence Against Native Women. And that is phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I, I cannot be prouder of our community for coming together and raising this amount of money. I mean, it's 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 amazing. And um, I think that the, the Coalition is going to do some fantastic things with that money. And I cannot wait um, for us to have a final total because it's just... It's just so much, so much awesome uh, work in the community with people stitching and with folks supporting the people stitching and people donating and participating in the Zooms. And it's just, it's just fantastic. Um, there's actually been a really, there's been a lot of really awesome stuff happening in the community this week. Now, if you're not on Instagram, you may be completely outside of this and that's totally fine. But there's been a couple of instances where folks have either been called in and they responded in an incredibly positive and wonderful way, um, or somebody was called in and then had to be called out and folks jumped in to help with emotional labor to help that person, <clears throat> help that person understand why they were maybe... Um, a little closed-minded in their original thinking. There's been some fantastic stuff happening in conversations and people making wonderful decisions and people jumping in as allies um, to to support and offer emotional labor and people working behind the scenes um, to, to kind of nudge folks in the right direction. It, there's been some fantastic stuff going on in the community. Um, outside of this big project that we're doing, there's other stuff, just normal everyday work going in um, to help people be better people in the the community and help people be better allies and help people just do better and be better humans and it's just so oh it makes me feel so good I'm just like I, I'm all warm and fuzzy because um, it's awesome to see people caring about other people and supporting other people and standing up for other people it's awesome it's awesome so anyway so for those of you who are doing the work um, and some of you do the work all the time um, and I call you out for that. <laughs> I call your name out for that all the time. Um, some of you are doing the work all the time. Some of you are maybe new to doing the work, but every one of you who is doing the work, thank you. Thank you. Um, because we all need it. We all need it. So, um, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that. It's just very, very, very exciting. So, <laughs> it's been really uplifting and really just... Um, amazing to see the work that's going to the community and learning um, learning more about people meeting people and learning more about them and um, developing friendships and stuff this last couple of weeks has just been it's just been awesome so um, thank you <laughs> thank you to all of you um, <clears throat> so yeah uh, that's what's going on <laughs> um, let's see other stitchy stuff I don't have a lot of other stitchy stuff um, what I do have is my Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers um, Floss of the Month. I just got them yesterday. Um, and these are super, super cool. Let me show you the inspiration first. So um, the picture has text on it. It says, Double, Double, Toil and Trouble, Fire, Burn, and Cauldron Bubbles. So it's from Shakespeare. It's the... Um, are they called the Three Witches? It's at the very beginning of Hamlet. I may be way off and if y'all are Shakespeare buffs and I'm off just let me know because I didn't I studied a little bit mostly I know Romeo and Juliet I know way more of the lines from Romeo and Juliet than I really ever should have but <clears throat> anyway so this was the inspiration for this month's flosses and I have to say these are some of my favorite flosses so far look at these look at these oh my gosh how awesome are these 
This is the first time I actually thought these might have been silks because this is the first time I recall getting uh, fiberlicious threads that were actually wound up like this. I'm used to getting Rolanda threads and um, hand dyed by Rolanda and also um, dyeing for cross stitch Kathy Davidson. They both do their their flosses and twists like this, and I think Brandy from Be Stitch Me does as well. But look at these colors, aren't they gorgeous? This gray is especially fantastic. So. <clears throat> so this is ashes to ashes look at that gray this one is cauldron bubble a nice blue green purple very appropriate for Halloween this one is wicked night I love the purple in this the purple is fantastic I kind of wish that I gotten a whole skein of that purple. I think that would be fantastic for um for little hexes. For little hex planchette. Um this is blue masquerade. This is also a fantastic color. I love the blue black gray that's going on there. And lastly we have Night's Watch. This one is interesting because we've got that sort of midnight blue, but black and brown mixed in. Very nice. So those are Fiberlicious for this month. And that's all the stitchy stuff I have for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so now you see why I felt like I could pat it out a little bit with some knitting, right? Because I feel like there has to be stuff I'm forgetting. And if there is, somebody is screaming it to the screen right now, but I, I can't for the life of me think of what it is. So let's talk about some knitting. So if you're only here for the cross stitching, then uh, you're welcome to skedaddle. You don't have to, but if, uh, if you don't care about knitting, then you are more than welcome to, uh, to check out and I'll see you again when I make another video. It's all good. <laughs> um, if you're here for the knitting, um, or if you if you just want to see what the heck I'm knitting, then absolutely let's let's get into it. So um, <clears throat> I can't remember exactly where I was the last time I did a knit cast and I kept meaning to actually look at my last knit cast and see what I talked about. Um, but you know, who's got time for that? Ain't nobody got time for that, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about the things that I can remember and we'll see how it goes. So <clears throat> I believe this is brand new. Uh, a brand new finish. I don't think I have shown this on the channel yet because I think I was very nearly finished but not completely finished the last time I did a knit cast. So here is my finish. It doesn't look like a lot <laughs> when I'm holding it like this. So uh, I'm going to hold it like this for a second and then I'll, I will unfurl it. Um, this is the Secret Life of Cats and Dogs, uh, otherwise known as Slow Cad. So this is a pattern that Casapinka put out last Christmas last winter holiday season um, that was specifically designed for a 24 to 25 um, mini skein set. So it was specifically designed for countdown slash advent boxes. Pardon, I'm uh, shaking the camera. Specifically designed for advent and uh, countdown yarn boxes. So this was um, the entire purpose of this was to use mini skeins. And um, I, uh, the mini skein set that I chose to use, uh, I'm actually not buying from this particular dyer anymore. Um, so if you, I'm not gonna mention the dyer's name because it's just, I just don't want to. Um, but <clears throat> the yarns are beautiful. I'm just not purchasing from this dyer anymore because they continue to produce Harry Potter related products. Um, so regardless, um, I did make this. It's gorgeous, it's fabulous. Um, and uh, hopefully that dyer will decide to make changes in the future. I am going to uh, be messaging them very soon um, to request that they do so because I would like to continue buying from them. Um, but for the moment, uh, not purchasing anything else. Um, sadly, I already bought this year's um, countdown box before um, I realized I needed to make a change in my purchasing. So, uh, but that's not gonna be shown on my channel. Anyway. <clears throat> Uh, so let's look at it. Um, try to remember which end is okay. So it's big. <laughs> so this is what 25 and this is not actually I still have tons of leftover yarn um, because it did not use full skeins, uh, full mini skeins. Um, so as big as this is, I still have tons and tons of yarn. So this is where it started. 
<laughs> um, and if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, if you've been watching KnitCast, you're familiar with a lot of this. Um, so this is the first few days. Oops. Let me drop it on the floor. I'm not really sure how best to display this with this camera set up, but we'll, we'll go with it. So it started in the sort of orangey red section there. We have some marling. That's what this technique is called. I hope I'm not making you seasick with my dropping things all over the place. Um, so this, this little patch here. Um, okay, there we go. <laughs> this patch here is uh, a technique called marling, which was new to me when I started it. Um, and there's lots of different fun textures and it's still sliding everywhere. Um, lots of different fun textures. It's one of the reasons that I love Casapinka and the way she designs things because when she does these mystery knit alongs, um, there's just all kinds of interesting fun textures that happen. I don't know if you can see. Um, I had gotten to the point on KnitCast where I was actually using two cameras so that I could show you better close-ups of the stitches and things. But I'm just gonna kinda go through a couple of sections at a time so you can kind of see what's happening here lots of different fun stuff i like this blue section here it's got some uh, ribs and knits here that are pretty cool <clears throat> this pink section at the top is one of the fun textures that i liked a lot and this turquoise section is another one that i really like i love the feel of that and the look of it and this kind of light green section has some marling but also some slip stitches that look fun we've got more slip stitches in that electric blue section there and i love this um, detail at the top of this blue section here you can kind of see those little fans coming out and then here is the last bit that i did so from that peachy section with the marling up to this red section at the top, um, I think I had almost done all of these sections um, as I was doing the last knit cast. This is an especially cool section. If you can see, there's, um, there's some loose threads that create these lines across the, the front of the piece in that really light pink section, and that's kind of fun. And then we just have the end there. So <clears throat> as you can see, this is uh, this is a mamma jamma of a of a scarf shawl. I think I did. I technically did the shawl, so you can see it's wide. I could wear it. I could wear it like a shawl. Um, but it's also sort of. I feel like I could wear it like a scarf too if I wanted to. Like if it's it never gets this cold in Virginia, but if I wanted to, I could. I'm trying to remember how to wear a scarf. <laughs> Can you tell it never gets cold enough for a scarf in Virginia? Because I don't even know how to wear a scarf. So if I wanted to, it would be the warmest scarf on earth. <laughs> right? Look at that. I love it. Okay. So yeah. <clears throat> so this is officially the second completed knitted garment that I have made. Um, sort of, it, it's sort of the third because I have like a plain old um, stockinette scarf that I did just to use like I just knitted it to make to use a skinny yarn <laughs> and that was like the first piece that I that I like finished piece that I made um but it's literally just a square scarf that I just I did stockinette stitch and then occasionally I'd throw in a garter stitch that's all that is so this has lots of different stitches it's the longest piece that I have made and it's the second like real garment that I've made the first one being um, a lace shawl that I made called Knit um, Changing Staircases, uh, which is a pattern from Dragon Horde Designs, I think. But yeah, so that is, it's finished. And I'm trying to figure out how I can, um, how I can use this like in professional settings because I just think it's so cool. Um, <clears throat> like how can I wear this as a, as a pro business professional garment, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if this really lends itself well to business attire. Um, not because of the colors, because I think the colors you can do whatever you want to with it, but I just don't know, I don't know how to wear this. I would probably wear it with all black, 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I think it's fabulous. I will absolutely wear it to work. Um, I may not wear it in professional meetings, but I would wear it if I was cold. <laughs> Um, cause it's just, it's just super awesome. Now it still needs blocking. Um, I haven't blocked it and you can tell there are, um, I need to weave in the ends at the, the, um, end of the beginning. Um, I was doing the weave and steve in all through the rest of it. So you can see there's not, I don't have a ton of, of ends to weave in throughout, but I do have the original starter. Oh no, I don't. Where did it go? Hmm. Okay, so apparently, <laughs> unbeknownst to myself, I already I already wove in the uh, the original end. So all I have to weave in is this last end because there's just that little bit there, and then I need to block it so it'll be nice and and uh, flat, <clears throat> and because uh, the the sides curl in. That's the main thing that's happening here is that the sides are curling in, but. I love the drape of it. It's got a really great drape and a stretchiness because I believe this is like a 70-30 a or an 80-20 um, sock yarn. So it's like nice and stretchy. Love it. So um, that's going to get lots of use. Lots and lots of use. <laughs> so that is Slowcad. So that is, a, that is almost a year in the making. Almost a year. Um, <clears throat> I finished it. Excuse me. When did I finish it? <clears throat> right before August, I guess. Um, so yeah, as I wad it up, let me, I'll pretend like I care and I'm just, <laughs> and I'll, I'll fold it up a little bit more neatly. This has been sitting on my side table because I have been meaning to show it to you all and I just haven't. So, um, <clears throat> at some point I will be brave enough to block it. I haven't blocked anything in my life. And there's a large part of me that's very nervous that I'll destroy it somehow. So um, at some point I will, I will block it. Um, so let's see, what else have I worked on? Um, I have, um, I have a couple of new starts since that finish that I'm going to show you. And then I have literally a bucket full of yarn that I have purchased that I want to show you. Um, <clears throat> so right after I finished, Slowcad. I started another Casapinka pattern. Now she does um, an annual mystery knit along and last year's was um, <clears throat> the Sharon show. I'm still working on that one. This year's was called Snarkometer. So I started on that and I believe I'm in week two. I'm on clue two. <laughs> I'm still way behind. Um, but look how awesome this is. Look at these Look at these different patterns and stuff. Now this one, I love this uh, kind of chevron wave ripple thing that's happening here. Um, but that was my first experience having to pull something, having to like really rip out a whole bunch of stitches because I got messed up on the make one left and the make one right um, until um, Jasmine, the knitting nurse, reminded me that I should go check out Stephen West's videos on how to do things when it comes to knitting. He is like the quintessential best teacher I have ever found on YouTube to, to show you how to do knitting stitches. Um, so I went and looked at his video and once I looked at his video I was like, oh that's how you do it. So I went back and I fixed that. Um, and interestingly, I'm not really sure why, th I'm hoping this will come out in blocking. I'm not sure why, focus please, okay. I'm not sure why, but I'm getting a lot of like puckering around this ripple area. So I'm hoping that'll come out in blocking. It's coming out pretty well, just like me straightening this out. So I think that'll be fine. But um, there's so much fun stuff going on here. Oh, that's a fantastic shot of it. There we go. Got the lighting and the focus and all the things. How pretty is that? So this is four different colors. It doesn't look like four different colors, but it is four different colors. Um, <clears throat> two of these, the dark green and the uh, the kind of bright blue here, um, those are Rich Hill yarns. Um, that's a locally dyed yarn uh, from here in Richmond, Virginia, which is really awesome. Uh, I have met the dyer, he's a really nice guy. And, um, <clears throat> and I love their colors. They have these really rich, but like, deep tones um, and I've shown the yarns before because I've um, I've bought several colors from them in fact I one of the one of the things I have to show you is a mini skein set from Rich Hill Yarns so that's a locally dyed yarn uh, which is really awesome and then this sort of um, 
purpley variegated one and this darker color that isn't well differentiated but it's sort of a purple and dark blue and dark green variegated um, that's popping up in between the stitches there um, those are both um, I think their life in the long grass is the dyer um, which is the first time I've purchased from them um, but those are some some fantastic yarns as well so loving that <clears throat> that's where I am with that and actually I can show you I can sort of show you the colors so <laughs> so here is that um, that dark variegated there we go and so this is a rich hill and the dark green that has disappeared that's rich hill and then this is life in the long grass over here and then this dark variegated my variegated are, are life in the long grass so um, I started to stitch this from stash or knit this from stash um, until I realized that this was actually a pattern where um, variegated and uh, um, speckles and stuff like that would be good and useful and so um, then I ended up buying I bought new yarn <laughs> because why not um, <clears throat> but all of that I purchased from a local yarn shop uh, which is it's fun to know that I have a local yarn shop that I can purchase from um, because I did not know that until the last six no, last year or so um, so yeah I, I purchase from them as often as I can so that's fun so that is um, <clears throat> Snarkometer. I'm way behind. Snarkometer's finished now as far as the, the knit along part. Um, but yeah, I'm way behind because that's, that's how I roll. And then just this past week, I started the Stephen West knit along, mystery knit along. This one is called Shawlography. This is my first ever attempt at a Stephen West pattern. And the way, the reason I say it that way is because Stephen West is really, he's known in the knitting community for being really bold and um, sort of out of the box and his patterns and his style are very avant-garde. Um, so I've always been really intimidated by his work. His stuff is really fantastic and interesting looking, but I've always been a little bit scared. Um, the thing is, um, and I've learned that this time, with this particular pattern. So with the MCAL, he actually puts out videos that show you exactly how to do each step of the uh, the pattern release. So there's an hour long video that shows you how to go through each individual section, how to knit it, tips and tricks, things like that. It's fantastic. So even though there's a lot of stuff going on that I've never done, like picking up stitches and doing eye cords and things like that, um, he explained it so well that I'm I'm not scared. I'm not scared and uh, I've done things already that I'm just like wow I never thought I would knit anything like this but it's been fantastic so um, I actually purchased um, <clears throat> I purchased a kit from Stephen and Penelope which is his knitting store um, the yarn I purchased is fiber spates which I believe is out of the UK um, so his store is in Amsterdam um, so in the Netherlands and um, the yarn that I actually got is, is from a British shop but I purchased it from him <clears throat> through the store which means I also got the kit so that's where this bag came from this is a Stephen and Penelope kit or bag I should say it's got all my yarn in it it also came with the 2021 MCAL sticker which is fabulous and it also came with uh, this tag to put on the finished piece. I don't know how to attach it, but there's, <laughs> there's a tag to put on the finished piece. And then it also came with these um, lazy swatch things. So this is, um, <clears throat> these really confused me at first. So all you do is you just wrap your yarn around this. So instead of knitting a swatch and possibly using up yarn that you might need for other stuff, you just wrap the yarn around this in the different color combinations to see how you like them. So that's, that's really awesome. <clears throat> it came with that. And then also the five skeins of yarn. So I'll show you the skeins in a minute, or maybe I'll put a picture up. I don't know how much editing I'm going to be able to do today. Um, but let me show you. So if you, if you're doing the MCAL, 
<laughs> if you're doing the MCAL, um, the second pattern or the second drop just came out this morning, I believe. I think it's already out. Um, it certainly will be by the time I post this video. Um, but if you're like me and you're a late starter and you haven't started pattern one and you don't want to be spoiled, then here's your spoiler warning. Um, I'm only part way through the second section, I think. Um, I'm in the wedge section. Um, so yeah, spoiler warning. Um, so here's where I am. <clears throat> I'm behind, <laughs> as usual. Um, so I am about halfway through this section. Look at this weirdness, right? Oh my gosh. So it started, it started with this little like lump of, of this. <laughs> and, um, and then there was an I cord that went out this way. And then all of these were built out from that. Um, which is such an interesting way to construct something. I never, it's not anything I would have ever thought of. And ultimately this is going to create sort of a fan situation. So this will be nice and rounded out and um, you'll be able to see the stitches really well um, here. And they're actually really fabulous. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? So um, it's going to be really nicely fanned out right there. And these, um, this looks almost like brioche if you've ever seen brioche, but this is really just um, stockinette and garter stitch. It's just rows and rows um, done with some German short rows to create these wedges. Um, it's just so inventive. Like, I don't know how I would have ever, I don't think I would have ever thought to construct anything this way, um, but it's really interesting. So this actually has all five colors in it. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell the way that they're combined, <clears throat> but that's where we are so far. So I'm hoping by the end of the weekend that maybe I'll be ready to start um, pattern two or clue two, but um, but I'm gonna get behind because I'm, I'm probably not gonna take this project with me on vacation. It's just a little too much yarn to carry. But let me show you the colors. Um, and I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna tip the bag sideways because I don't wanna take these out. They're very nicely wedged in here to keep them secure and I don't wanna take them out. So here are my colors. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon. <clears throat> Look at the pretty colors. Okay. Hold them towards the camera. There we go. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is sort of an autumnal rainbow. That's why I picked this color, uh, color combination. I'm trying to get the, there we go. So you can see there's an orange up in this color. We've got this nice sort of mustardy yellow in the center. We have a purpley blue here at the bottom. And then we've got a darker red and a, um, a lighter red. So this has some like pinky, blue or purple tones. And this has more um, orangey, bricky red tones. Um, but yeah, we have some really fun, really fun colors going on. I love I love these colors and I cannot wait to see the other color combinations because the nice thing is he's like, you know, <clears throat> in the first video, he's telling you how to decide what order to put your colors in. And he's like, so color A, you probably want that to be your like pop color, like your, your really statement color and or you want it to be the color that you like the most. So that should be color A. Color B needs to be a color that's a that's contrasts really well because in this first section, it's going to frame the other colors. So you really want it to be a color that's going to to look good framing the other colors. And then he said, the other three colors, you can put them in any order that you want because it really doesn't matter. All the colors are gonna switch around throughout the garment and each one of them is gonna have a chance to really be um, the center of attention at some point. So like, I love the way he explained that. So um, all of these colors will come to the forefront. So <clears throat> because purple is my favorite color, um, I chose for this purple blue, bluey purple to be color A. So that's gonna be like my, and I think it works well for the accent color for that pop, because this is the only cool color really. All the rest of these are, are reds and yellows and oranges and stuff. And this orange color specifically is fantastic. It's all of the autumn beautifulness. It really is. And now I can't get it to focus, <clears throat> but yeah. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be so awesome. So I can't wait to see where this is going. I really can't wait to see where this is going. <laughs> um, and I'm just so excited to be doing a pattern like this because it's one of the, I think it's one of the reasons that I love knitting so much. Knitting has always been a real challenge for me. I've had to reteach myself to knit um, 
several times um, over the course of the last several years. This is the first time that I've actually made knitting stick where I can remember how I'm supposed to do things and I feel like I'm doing them correctly and that kind of stuff. And, um, and I think the reason I love it so much is because every time something has seemed scary or daunting, when I've taken the time to look up how to do the stitch and practice it, I've been able to pick it up. So I, there's nothing in knitting that I haven't eventually been able to master. And I think it's just the fun and excitement of knowing that um, that I may not be perfect at, some, at something in the beginning, but I can definitely learn how to do it. Um, and that now I can do things that are like, past me would have been like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna try that because that looks so scary. And current me is just like, you know what? If you find the right videos and you try it enough, you'll eventually figure it out. And I think part of it is just, I have such a hard time with the concept of not being perfect at something immediately. And part of that is my ADHD because it's very much a thing of like my entire life I have felt like if I pick something up and wasn't immediately good at it then I should just not do it and that's not the way life works you know most people are not immediately good at anything that they do you know you have certain aptitudes and, so, and some things you do pick up and you're just a whiz that's that happens but for the most part for most things people are not perfect at them as soon as they picked it up. But you know, some of us have this issue where we don't understand that that's how life works. We feel like if we're not perfect at it, it's not our thing, we need to move on. <laughs> and I love the fact, I think I just love the fact that I have stuck at knitting and I have kept trying and I've kept learning and I've been able to pick up things that I never thought I would have picked up. So anyway, so that's where we are. Stephen West, Stephen West. I. If you'd asked me a year ago if I thought I would ever do anything this complicated, I would have been like, uh-uh, nope, not me, not me. Yeah, so that's where we are now. Uh, very, very exciting. Um, ultimately, that piece is gonna go on a really, really long cable, which is why I have all this other junk um, in this bag because I'll have to switch out the cable at some point. Um, I'm using a shorter cable just to make life easier right now while the piece is small. So. Um, those are the pieces that I'm working on currently. I still have a couple other whips. I'm not going to pull them out right now. Um, but those are the, the active whips uh, that are going on right now. And I'm trying to figure out where I can put some things so that I can show you all this other yarn that I have to show you. <laughs> uh, I set those over there. Set this over here. So um, I had mentioned just a minute ago that I purchased pardon the sound, uh, that I purchased some additional Rich Hill minis. Um, now the reason that I got these is because uh, in my local needle workshop, look, local yarn store, <laughs> which is called Dances with Wool, um, is the cutest name, um, they, um, they actually had a finished piece, a sample piece, that was, it's a cowl that's knitted with these colors and it looked so phenomenal that I was just like, I mean, I already love these colors, but then I saw a finished piece using them and I was like, okay, I definitely have to get that mini skein set. So this is the Rich Hill mini skein, mini skein set, excuse me. It's a little spendy uh, for mini skeins, but it is 12, I think, excuse me. So, yeah. And they are, I want to say they're 20 grams. Um, yeah, so these are 20 grams, 92 yards. Um, they're a really thin sock yarn. Um, they're actually a very fine sock yarn. Um, so they're a little bit, um, it's a little bit smaller than fingering weight yarn, um, <clears throat> which I really love that weight actually. So, but look at all these fabulous colors. Um, I just love how rich and deep these colors are. So this is one of my favorites. This is actually technically the third skein of this color that I will have purchased. I've purchased two full size skeins and this skein of that color because I love that color so much. But this pink is phenomenal. It's coming out more red on camera, um, but this is a sort of magenta pink, which I really, really love. And then we've got this purple blue. I have a large a full skein of that, um, but there's just so many awesome colors in there. And I have purchased the um, the pattern for the cowl to make these into, um, and I'm very excited to, because that's gonna look awesome. It's gonna be this like tonal deep rainbow. It's gonna be fat and fantastic. So I got those. And then, um, so a lot of different yarn shops 
<clears throat> participate in different kinds of yarn crawls. I have not really participated in a yarn crawl. My understanding is that it's basically the situation where your local yarn stores um, will all participate together and the idea is that you go visit all of them during the crawl. Um, so it's not like, it's not quite like a bar crawl where you hop from the store directly to the next store. It happens over the course of a week. So you might go to one store today and a different store tomorrow, but you try to visit them all purchase things from them all so on and so forth and everybody has specials and new dyers and things like that well um here in this area it's called the james river yarn crawl and that happened middle of september um, i didn't go physically to uh, my local yarn store i just purchased online um, and i didn't have a chance to go to the other stores because they're pretty spread out in this area so the the closest two are still about 30 minutes from each other because one is in Midlothian and one is in Ashland. Uh, Rachel and I have actually been to the one in Ashland. That one is called Center of the Yarniverse, <laughs> which is super cute. Um, but there's uh, four more in this general vicinity. And when I say general vicinity, I mean within 90 minutes to two hours. <laughs> so I didn't go to any of the others. Um, I just I just purchased online from um, Dances with Wool. And um, I had seen through one of their, their yarn crawl Instagram posts this fantastic set of colors that I just had to purchase. So this is um, from a dyer called Sweet Georgia. Um, and the skein set is called Party of Five. It's like a they have a bunch of different colorways and they call the skeins Party of Five because it's five mini skeins. Look how beautiful those are. Like jewel tones. I just loved, I loved this color combination, so I had to get it. So we have Jewel on this far side, which is um, a pinkier purple, and that's that's called Jewel. And then we have Aubergine. And then this one that's more of a navy color is called Velvet Elvis. And then we have Azurite, which is a bluer, um, a deeper blue, closer to a true blue. And then we have Peacock on the end, which is this kind of teal color. Fantastic. I probably should take it out of the package, but I'm just not gonna. <laughs> they are awesome though. Look at those colors. I love them. So, um, so that was how I participated in the Aaron Crawl. Um, I bought these two things online and I had them shipped to me because <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to crawl. <laughs> um, now the rest of the stuff I have is mostly from Curio Stitches. Um, I ordered this ages and ages ago and um, it got lost in international mail forever, ever. Because I think she shipped it in June and it finally got to me in September or the end of August or something. And she shipped it in a box and that box looked like it had seen some things. Let me tell you. So anyway, um, <clears throat> so let's look at these yarns. Unfortunately, I don't believe you're going to be able to purchase these yarns at any point in the future. Um, she had to close down her yarn shop for various reasons. But I did want to show you the yarns that I purchased because she has made some fantastic colorways. Um, I'm really sad that she shut down her shop. I would have um, certainly patronized her more had international shipping not become such a bear. That was the main reason that I didn't purchase from her. But when she decided that she was going to have a, a going out of business sale, um, I I decided to support her as much as I could. So I bought a lot of yarn from her, <laughs> including several mini skeins, <laughs> because mini skeins. Um, so this is... Um, a mini skein set she called pink charcoal it's actually got a larger skein of this black here um, so it has 150 gram skein and the rest are 20 gram mini skeins um, these are 85 15 superwash nylon mixes and look at those colors so we've got this like orangey peachy one you got bright pink light pink this um, kind of almost lavender gray and then that beautiful charcoal color so that would make a really fun um, shawl. I can uh, I know that there's tons of Casa Pinkage um, patterns that would work really well for this kind of set. So that's super cute. And then I also got this one, <clears throat> which is basically the same mini skein set. It's got the 50 gram in the charcoal. This is red orange charcoal. So um, obviously we have reds and oranges. <laughs> <laughs> We've got this lovely deep red. Now, as a reminder, um, Curio Stitches is who did the, um, the, uh, oh, what is the show called? 
It was in my brain until I started to talk about it. She did a mini skein set that was based off of the television show on HBO. Lovecraft Country. <laughs> Just like completely. Um, so she did the mini skein set um, that was uh, inspired by Lovecraft Country. And those were fantastic colors. I cannot wait to decide what to do with those. Um, but this red reminds me of, uh, of one of those colorways. That's why I was pointing that out. Um, but these are gorgeous. So we've got this really bright yellow here, which is actually coming out paler on camera. This is like a really, really yellow. Um, and then this sort of like goldenrod. We got this like beautiful orange. And this is an orangey sort of red if this one and this one had married and had a child so that's that's what that one looks like um but yeah so gorgeous mini skein set and then i also got <clears throat> this is this is 250 gram skeins uh coal and water she called these an element or she called these the elements set and she had a couple of different colorways for these as well this is the one that was available when i was when i was shopping um but this is gorgeous i love this teal color and then again, this like black charcoal, beautiful. And these are so soft and squishy. All of these are soft and squishy. She did a lot of um, high twist yarn, which I love. Um, I'm a huge fan of high twist. And let's see, I got this set, Book of Shadows. Not exactly sure what show or book or whatever that's based off of because um book of shadows is in a number of things um focus please there we go lovely lovely colors though this is not quite black you can see that there's some red and um maroon tones in there and this is a sock set so this is a 100 gram skein with a 20 gram skein so this would be for your sock and then you would do the heel and the toe and the contrasting color really really beautiful super soft this is um yeah this is 8515 <clears throat> Uh, merino and uh, nylon and then this is crushed velvet this is 100% superwash but look at that color how gorgeous I love that color I'm so sad that she's not dying because I mean these are these are some fantastic rich colors and I love the speckling and then last but not least um, I think this was a throw-in skein because I had ordered um, I had ordered something that was misinventoried, and uh, so she was out of it. And I said, whatever you have left, just throw it in. I'm totally fine. Because um, <clears throat> I didn't want her to have to go to a whole bunch of hassle or refund any money or anything. So I was just like, whatever you've got left, just chuck it in there. And I think that's how it got this one. So this one is a silver sparkly fingering. It's 75% merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. So it's got that sparkle. I don't know. Yeah, you can see the sparkle. Look how pretty that is. Gorgeous. What's fun is that this is actually sort of two different tonals <laughs> kind of mixed together. Um, that would be really fun to throw in with some speckles and things like that. So, so yeah, super, super. So I'm really sad that, um, that Ellie over at Curio Stitches is not knitting or is not doing yarn anymore, <clears throat> but she is still designing. So she's still, she's still in the business, in the community and that sort of thing. She's just not dying. And I can understand. I mean, uh, there's, I, I have dyed fabric uh, for cross stitching um, and that's sort of my wheelhouse for dyeing. It's much easier for me and it's something that I can conceptualize and I can, I can do and it's not too difficult. Yarn dyeing is a whole different beast requires a whole different skill set, um, at least a little bit of a chemist kind of brain, um, as well as color theory and all this sort of stuff. And it is not how my brain works. So all of this is magic to me. And her particular um, just style of color mixtures and stuff was really, really unique and interesting and different. So I'm sad that she's not doing it, but I understand how much of a, a lift it is to dye yarn. And I know that with all of COVID going on and the shipping issues, it was just probably too difficult for her. So I'm very sad that she's not dyeing yarn anymore, but I'm very thankful that I have purchased as much yarn as I have from her because I, I do have several skeins stuck in here too. So, um, I have a fair bit on hand, which makes me happy. <laughs> um, let's see, and I just have a couple more things and I'm gonna let you go. <clears throat> so um, I have my little bishes. This is a couple of months ago. Um, so probably no spoiler warning needed at this point because this has been in here for a while. Um, this is called Cornucopia. 
and I can't remember, this probably was July, I'm guessing. I have another box somewhere, but I couldn't locate it before this video. <laughs> and I have another one that's still on the way. Look at this purple though. So this is the Many Things in Life um, yarn set or yarn uh, subscription. Yeah, because it comes every month. It's a monthly, it's a monthly yarn club. Um, but this purple, oh my gosh, I can't get over that purple. And I love this too. It's just kind of like speckly. <clears throat> we got orange and yellow and green beautiful beautiful um so this particular club comes with five 20 gram mini skeins i've chosen um, a sparkly base um and this is doesn't say the um the particular uh fiber content i'm sure i have it somewhere I've forgotten but it comes with the five 20 gram mini skeins and then also a 50 gram mohair so this is the mohair that came with this this one is called fall inspiration so that was i think july's club that would make sense because if this was july i have august somewhere and then september is still on its way to me so very very nice so that is from little bishes who is in germany and she's fantastic i love her too and then lastly i have <clears throat> this is a new to me dyer and um I, ha I have to be honest, I haven't fully vetted her shop. I don't think she has any HP stuff. Um, I have not seen any, so I believe it is an HP free, I, I believe her shop is an HP free zone, HP being Harry Potter. Um, <clears throat> but full disclosure, I haven't done all of the investigation, but I think, I think this is safe. Um, this is from Havari Bazaar Yarns and um this was a one-off she does a, a different colorway every month um based on different things this was her anime anime colorway uh for july the anime july club um and this is on a 7520 superwash nylon 7525 superwash nylon mix um and this particular colorway the sock set was based off of um my Hero Academia, Boku no Hero Academia, uh, which is one of the animes that I am like super in love with right now. Um, it's another one of the, the reason that I love My Hero Academia, let me tell you. So the main character, um, his hero name is Deku. Um, his, uh, his full name is Izuku Midoriya. And um, he, um, <clears throat> the reason that I love him so much is the same reason that I love so many heroes, because he is the hero that was never meant to be a hero and it's not that like he's not like spider-man in that he's the reluctant hero he's the kid that so desperately wanted to be a hero but he's like the only person in a world of people who get superpowers he's the only one who was born without superpowers so like in this particular storyscape um 80 of the world's population are born with what they call quirks which is some kind of superpower um and this can be anything from like you can um, blow bubbles from thin air to like you can blow stuff up. I mean, it's just all kinds of different genetic quirks that cause you to have some kind of super ability. Some people can make themselves gigantic, change their size, sort of like Ant-Man. Um, some people can um, can like create things out of other matter um, or they can eat sugar and it gives them power. Like there's all these different kinds of things. So 80% of the world's population is born with some kind of quirk. And Midoriya is one of the 20% who was born with nothing. And, but he still has this drive to be a good person and to help other people and to, to save people from bad things. Um, and, and so he has no abilities, but he has the biggest heart. And um, ultimately he does get an ability um, and he gets a very special ability actually. Um, and so he he's able to do what he wants to do, but it's like the only reason that he was even in a position to get that ability was because his heart was so big and he was so determined. And yeah, so it's just, I, I always fall in love with these people who are special because they aren't special. Like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, so this is based off of, uh, this. this is inspired by that show um the main skein is like you can't even see it because it's just like it's fluorescent yellow <laughs> it's, 
Um, and you'd have to watch the show to even get why this is why this color is inspired by the show. But um, it wasn't what I was expecting. I'll say that because uh, this this blue green color is totally like that reads uh, Hero Academia to me. This reads less so. Um, so I was a little surprised, I guess, by the uh, by the colorway. But it's it's certainly interesting and unique. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my first time buying um, Havari Bazaar. Um, I learned about them through Michelle over at Bendy Stitchy. Um, they were part of a Ramadan countdown box um, of yarn that was put out last year that I saw is actually getting put out again this year. So I'm going to investigate the dyers and make sure they're all um, good HP free dyers. Uh, and then I may purchase that box for uh, for next year, especially because I think it's important to expand out the the holidays that we recognize and we celebrate um, because there are more than just Christian holidays especially for those of us who are not Christian so um, yeah <clears throat> so there is that and that's um, actually I have one more thing but I have to I have to unwrap it and I don't think I'm going to do that because we're already at an hour now so um, <clears throat> at some point in the future <laughs> um, I bought this for um I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have any identifying information. So uh, this is actually a kit for another mystery knit along. It's called Just Beachy. And I forget who the designer is, um, but this was um, a beautiful, beautiful colorway for the Just Beachy mystery knit along. And I just absolutely had to have it. Obviously I have not started the knit along. The knit along started at the beginning of September and I just had too much stuff going on, but I still have the kit. So at some point, at some point I will open this and I will show it to you because it's gorgeous. But I'm not going to go to the trouble of that today. So I've shown you tons and tons of yarn. And those of you who were never here for the yarn to begin with are like, oh my gosh, why? Why? Because this is now, yeah, anyway, it's a thing. Um, if you're a stitcher, you understand. You understand. You may not get the yarn thing, but you understand what it is to collect as much as you, more than you craft with. So it's just... You know, one of the hobbies is the stitching. The other hobby is the collecting of the stitchy things. It's the same with knitting. One of the hobbies is the actual knitting and the rest of the hobby is the collecting of the knitting things. It just is what it is. So, <clears throat> okay folks, well that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope that you have the best Friday that's available to you, the best weekend that's available to you, the best week, week month, everything that's available to you. Um, if you're interested in Season of Smalls, make sure you check out my website where you can get more information about um, the rules and how to how to um, uh, make sure that you're entered for the, the prizes at the end and all that sort of stuff. Um, you still have two weeks to participate, so you will need to get your, um, you will need to fill out the Google form. I'll try to remember to link it directly here before, um, as well. But if the uh, Google form is not directly linked, you can get to the Google form by clicking on the link to the Season of Smalls page on my website over at misleadpages.com. So that'll all be there for you. Um, <clears throat> so I think, uh, I think I set the deadline at midnight Eastern on October 31st. So make sure you get that in before November 1st, but you still have time. You still got two weeks to finish your smalls. Um, I'm going to try really hard to finish five smalls <laughs> before the end of the month. And yeah, and that's where we are. So anyway, in the meantime, always remember, stay hydrated, take all the meds that you need to take, and remember that you are enough. And I will see you all next time. Have a good one.